Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, to another program of The Deadly Experiment, seen on the stations that you will find at the very end of the program today. The public access stations in the state of Rhode Island, and those of you who are on Rick Adams' The Deadly Experiment YouTube channel as well. And, uh, you know, many people are watching us now on YouTube uh, especially younger viewers, uh, as we know, YouTube has censored, has taken down, has removed a great many of the channels that exist on that facility, that venue, because of the fact that some of them are, uh, well, shall we say, a little bit too poignant, just a little bit too explicit in uh, revealing things that should not be revealed that would otherwise be exposed by the media had the general news media been uncorruptible. Unfortunately, the media are totally the large media, not your local stations as much, but the national international media are basically a handful of companies now that work hand in glove with Intel, the CIA, the FBI, the Mossad, MI6, MI5 in Britain, French intelligence, Russian intelligence, um, and all of the other nations of the world that are in on this cabal. Friends, it is a cabal. It is a group of people, of governments, of nations, that have a vested interest in lying to you. And I mean lying, deceiving you through attacks, through shootings, through these purported massacres that are happening on a weekly basis, it seems. All of this is done to instoke propaganda, disinformation in the mind, so you'll believe something that is not true. And most of all, to create a sense of fear, a sense of fear. Because when you fear something, you can be controlled, as the young child found out in the movie, The Never-Ending Story, number one. That was uh, one of the most poignant lines in that whole movie. When people are made to be fearful, they can be controlled. And who is it that wants to control them? Well, Satan. Ultimately, Satan wants to control the whole world. God has given him a time frame where he can gather his children al alive and dead, many of them now, but put them together, bring them all together, and then use them in the media, in government, in academic circles, in religion most of all, that is the churches and the synagogues in particular, the mosques now, all of them together to create a communitarian world. What do I mean by communitarianism? That is the ideology or philosophy that brings the whole world together. Togetherness, the Rodney King venue, if you will. Can't we just all come together and love one another despite all of these tragedies and all of these hoaxes and yet all of these, these events that make us fearful and look to government, not God, you see, but look to government as our Savior. And that's what Satan wants. Hi, I'm from the government and I'm here to help you. Isn't that what the government always tells you? These elections that we've had turned out exactly, for the most part, the way I saw them turning out. My friends, there is no escape in politicians. There is no escape in political parties. There is no escape in the election system. There is no escape in economics. Far be it from that. There is no escape in anything that is of this earth and heaven age. When are you going to understand that? The only escape from lies and deception economic depravity and political turmoil as well as religious confusion in the mind is right here in front of me this hardbound book it's called the bible and uh, for those of you who don't know it has all the answers you need to understand why we're in the mess we're in today where we are headed and most of all how it'll all turn out well god says it's going to turn out all right for some for many there will be those who will be destroyed at the end of the reign of Satan and the beginning of the millennium and then the eternity. There will, those be, there will be those who are just unfortunately not fit for the kingdom of God. And uh, it's all about his kingdom. This earth age, this system is going to pass away. That lovely car you bought, 
that lovely home you thought you bought, and yet you are now paying higher interest rates. You, you are mortgaging your future and the future of your kids. And Rhode Island is quite a mortgaged state. Mortgage means death grip. Morte and grip, a grap, means a grip of death around your throat, your pocketbook. And friends, it's going to get worse. Everything will financially have to collapse. That balloon is about to burst. So the only safety you have is in this Word of God. Unfortunately, and we'll show it in just a few minutes on today's program, many today who say they believe the Bible from cover to cover, including the covers, unfortunately are reading the wrong Bible. They're in the wrong church. They're in the wrong pew. And unfortunately, they're headed in the wrong direction. Why do I say that? Well, one of the three or four main things that separates a true biblical Christian, one who understands the Word of God, who is called of God, and those who say they are Christians but don't study the real Word in the languages in which the Bible was written. The Masora and the Septuagint, the Hebrew and the Greek which is the basis for the Word of God. The King James Bible has a lot of translation errors. Not errors. There are no errors in God's Word. But there are in the translations. And that's why we have, we have the concordance. To tell us where those errors are. To reveal the real meaning of words. And today on this program, we're going to give you a program that was made many years ago by a scholar, a legal scholar and a biblical scholar, Dr. Bertrand L. Compare, who I think is one of the finest men in the ministry of God, was. He died at age 83, I believe, um, and he was quite a scholar in making people, you, for instance, understand one of the things that confuses churches today in the Christian and non-Christian world is the idea that the quote, Jews are part of Israel, that they are part of Judah, number two. Number three, there's a rapture coming that's going to take you away before the Messiah, the fake Messiah, the fake Jesus comes. That's in direct contradiction to the Word of God from the Old to the New Testament, which tells us that God's elect will face Messiah, the fake Messiah, the fake Jesus, when he comes in Jerusalem. What's so hard to understand about that? The sixth trump of Satan, 666, comes before the seventh, before the real Jesus comes. Six comes before seven. Can you understand that? Yet most Christians today believe there's a rapture coming to take them away so they don't have to face Satan. And that's the whole purpose of Scripture, to witness against Satan. So this business of, quote, those who call themselves Jews but are not and do lie and are of the synagogue of Satan is spoken of by Jesus himself in Revelation 2.9 and Revelation chapter 3.9. I know the blasphemy of them who say they are Jews, meaning Judah, meaning one of the 12 tribes of Israel, but are not and do lie and are of the synagogue of Satan, right here in your scriptures. How did they become known as Jews? The word Jews does not appear anywhere in the scriptures. Judeans does, and Judah does. You will not find the bastardized word Jew. That is, again, a mistranslation error from originally the King James revisions. So, folks, understand those are three or four of the main basic things. And especially this doctrine of the rapture and the church, which does not appear in the scripture either. The word church has never been in the original Greek or Hebrew. Ekklesia in the Greek means the called out ones. Those who fellowship together called apart from the world. There is no building in the Bible. Jesus did not set up a 501c3 church. I'm afraid to tell you. He spoke in the open. He spoke in tents. He spoke wherever there was an opportunity for him to witness his truth. Let's get this idea of a church building out of our heads. And right now, let's go to Dr. Compare and get this idea of the Bible is not a Jewish book. The statement is commonly made, even by those who should know better, that we Christians owe a debt to the Jews, for we got our Bible and our religion from them. While many people have been deceived into believing this, 
It is completely false. Part of the mistake comes from the complete confusion in the minds of nearly all people as to just what they mean by Jew. Are they referring to people of a certain race or people of a certain religion? For the two are not the same. There are in Africa today some pure-blooded Negroes who are Jews by religion. And there are in China today some pure-blooded Mongolians who are Jews by religion. Likewise, there are some people today who are of the racial stock of the Jews but who have been converted to other religions, such as ben Gurion, for years premier of the Jewish nation in Palestine, who is by religion a Buddhist. First, let's consider the claim that we got our Bible and our religion from the Jews as meaning Jews by religion. Now, it's certain that we did not get the New Testament from them, for it condemns the Jewish religion throughout all the New Testament. But did we get the Old Testament from them? No, for several reasons. In the first place, no Jew by religion existed before the return from the Babylonian captivity shortly after 536 B.C. Their great historian Josephus Speaking of the time when they started to rebuild Jerusalem after their return from Babylon, says this, So the Jews prepared the work. That is the name they are called by from the day that they came up from Babylon. The only books of the Old Testament that were written after the return from Babylon are parts of Kings and Chronicles, Ezra and Nehemiah, all of these four historical rather than doctrinal, and Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. In none of these do the Jews receive anything but rebuke for their wickedness, for their apostasy from the true religion of the Old Testament. The late Rabbi Stephen F. Wise, formerly Chief Rabbi of the United States, said this, The return from Babylon and the introduction of the Babylonian Talmud mark the end of Hebrewism, and the beginning of Judaism. The learned rabbi was correct in distinguishing the true religion of the Old Testament as Hebrewism, for it was the religion of the real Hebrews who were not Jews at all. Judaism, the religion of the Jews, is, as the learned rabbi says, based upon the Babylonian Talmud, which contains the supposed oral law, which was never reduced to writing as part of the Bible, and which gradually gained greater force among the Jews than the written law in the Bible, with which it often conflicted. In Jesus' day, the Babylonian Talmud was known as the tradition of the elders. This is why Jesus Christ told the Jews in Mark 7, verses 6 to 13, Well has Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips but their heart is far from me. Howbeit, in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition, and making the word of God of no effect through your tradition which ye have delivered. Again in Matthew 22, verse 29, he told them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. And in Matthew 23, verse 23, he said to them, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. This was the religion of the Jews. As the learned rabbi Stephen F. Wise said, it was Judaism, as distinguished from Hebrewism, which was the real religion of the Old Testament. Certainly, Christianity took nothing from any Jewish religion, for we've never taken any part of Christianity from the Talmud. Naturally, the Jews didn't give us any part of the New Testament either, for it completely repudiates and condemns the Jewish religion of the Talmud. Well, then... Can it be said that we got our Bible or our religion of Christianity from men of the Jewish race? No, it cannot. It can be clearly proved, both out of the historic 
books of the Bible and out of the only thorough history of the times written by one living when the facts were still well known, which is Josephus, Antiquity of the Jews, that the Jews were a people distinct and separate from God's people Israel, although living among them. The Jews were the Canaanite peoples who lived in Palestine before Israel entered the Promised Land and who were not driven out but were allowed to remain in the land while paying heavy tribute taxes. And the half-breed intermixture from some intermarriage between the Canaanites and the Israelites. Also, a portion of the Jews were the Canaanite mixture Edomites. The prophets who wrote the books of the Old Testament, on the other hand, were all of pure Israelite stock from one or another of the twelve tribes of Israel. For example, Moses, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Habakkuk, Haggai, and Zechariah were of the tribe of Levi. Joshua and Samuel were of the tribe of Ephraim. Isaiah, Daniel, and Zephaniah were of the house of David, out of the tribe of Judah. Jonah was of the tribe of Zebulun, and Hosea was of the tribe of Issachar. When the Assyrians conquered and deported the people of the ten northern tribes who had kept the name Israel, the Bible records that the Assyrians brought other people in from the Assyrian Empire and settled them in Samaria in place of the Israelites they had deported. But Samaria is only the southern half of the territory occupied by these ten northern tribes. The northern half of their territory was Galilee, and this was left vacant. When the kingdom of Judah was later deported to Babylon for their 70 years' captivity, their land was left with very little population. And while they were gone, the Edomites, who were descendants of Esau mixed with Canaanite people, were forced out of their own land by pressure of invading Arab tribes, and they moved westward into the vacant lands of Judah, occupying the southern half of the former kingdom of Judah. Therefore, when a portion of the two tribes of Judah and Benjamin returned from the Babylonian captivity, they were too few in numbers to drive out the warlike Edomites and had to try to squeeze into the very little territory they had left. It was too small for them. So what was left of the tribe of Judah took the little territory remaining around Jerusalem, and the tribe of Benjamin was pushed to the north. They couldn't move just next door into Samaria because that was occupied by the people the Assyrians had settled there. So Benjamin had to leapfrog over them into the vacant territory of Galilee. That the apostles and the majority of Christian converts came from the Benjamites of Galilee should not surprise us. For when the kingdom was split in two upon the death of Solomon, God said that he would leave Benjamin with Judah so that the house of David should have a light before them. And in Christ's time, the people of Benjamin were still the light bearers. In the New Testament, all of the apostles were of the tribe of Benjamin, except Judas Iscariot, the only Jew among them, who came from the village of Cariot in southern Judea. Iscariot is a corruption of the Hebrew ish Kerioth, man of Kerioth. Paul tells us that he, Paul, was of the tribe of Benjamin. And all of the other apostles, except Judas Iscariot, were from Galilee, where the tribe of Benjamin had settled after the return from Babylon. This is confirmed by Jesus Christ himself. In Matthew 15, verse 24, he said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In the tenth chapter of the Gospel of John, Jesus tells the Jews, I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and am known by mine. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. From the Savior's own lips we have proof that the Jews are not of any of the tribes of Israel. Note carefully that he does not say that their unbelief keeps them from being of his sheep. He says the exact opposite, that the reason why they do not believe is that they are not of his sheep, not of the house of Israel. Christianity and Judaism are completely and irreconcilably inconsistent. 
Whichever one is right, the other must be wrong, for they are mutually repudiating each other. A great part of Jesus Christ's reported words are his denunciation of the Jews for their religion, which he tells them is not that of the Old Testament. In John 5, verse 46, Jesus told them, Had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. And in Luke 16, verse 31, Jesus said, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. He was right, of course. He did rise from the dead, but to this day they are not persuaded. It is clear, therefore, that we did not get either our Bible or our Christian religion, either in whole or in part, from those who were Jews, either by religion or by race. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for those of you who listened to the words of Dr. Compare and the meaning of those words, can you now understand why the whole world is deceived? Why Christians who should not be are the most deceived of all? Because they're believing a lie. And who is behind the lie? Well, Satan himself and his children in Jerusalem. Those who call himself Judah and are not but do lie. They want the world to think of them as Jews and the Christians and everybody else to think of themselves as Gentiles, gentile, which simply means nations, other nations in the word of God. There is the true Israelite people of the Bible made up of the house of Israel and the men of Judah, who are two separate entities today, the two sticks, the olive sticks, as it were, in the Bible. And yet they will be rejoined when? When Jesus comes to begin his millennial rule in judgment with a rod of iron to discipline and do most of all what? Teach. Teach an unsuspecting, blinded, totally ignorant world, especially the Christians who are deceived what his word is all about. Who are the true Israelites? And who are those who are not but claim to be of Israel? Now you understand, don't you? The Bible makes it clear, if you have a scholarly understanding about it, that we're being lied to on a daily basis. There is nothing you can believe anymore. I don't care if you say you saw it with your own eyes. Pictures, videos, and images can be concocted digitally, Listen to me now, digitally, to make you see something you did not see. And that was brought out perfectly on 9-11 with the collapsing towers and these so-called planes going right through heavy concrete and going right through them. That is an impossibility. I know I'm shocking some of you, but again, we've done this many times. We've talked about 9-11 and the imagery that was used to propel America into a new what we call Pearl Harbor type event, a sneak attack designed to put America in the Middle East on behalf of Israel, that's the fake Israel <coughs> in the Middle East, to serve her purposes of creating war, terror, bringing down nations that threaten her existence, killing millions of souls ultimately, and then to prepare the world for peace in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the city of Yerushalayim in Hebrew. No J in the Hebrew alphabet. It is Yah. That means God, Yahweh, God's city of peace. Is it a city of peace now? Uh-uh. Is it a city of hate? Yes. A city of occupation? Yes. A city of wickedness? Yes. The city that Jesus and the apostles described as what? Sodom and Egypt? Yes. There's no peace. There's no love. There's no freedom. Division? Yes. Strife? Yes. Occupation? Yes. Murder of the innocents, the good figs, and the Palestinians, who are also good figs. By the who? The bad figs. Jeremiah, in his word, chapter 24, tells us there are two baskets of figs. One on the left is the bad fig. The other on the right is the good fig. 
It's interesting to note in the scriptures that the left side of hell, as it's called, the left side of the gulf is the side of those who are communists, revolutionaries, Marxists, socialists, Zionists, Talmudists. On the left, adestra in Italian. On the right is something entirely different. That's the right side of the gulf. That's the side where you find God's children, those who believed in Jesus, who were saved, on the right side of what is called hell, but it's really the gulf that exists between the two sides. Uh, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, I meant to say the exact opposite. Obviously, it's sinistra, which means sinister. That is the left side of the gulf. The right side is adestra, the right side of the gulf. So you have two opposite sides, and I, I, I uh, apologize for the slip, but uh, again, uh, adestra is the right, not the left, and sinistra is the left. And that's the red side of the gulf. The communists, the slaughterers of millions of souls of people over the centuries, particularly the last uh, century or so. But once again, that's the difference. Pardon me, and thank you for your forbearance. And there's a big gulf that separates the two. That's why the rich man could not cross over to the other side in the Gospel of Luke in chapter 16. The rich man wanted a drop of water to cool his tongue. He could see the flames coming. And Lazarus was there as happy as could be. Poor little ill Lazarus. They like to call him the beggar, but he wasn't a beggar in the traditional sense. He was ill. He was sick. He had sores all over his body. He had, uh, obviously, uh, a bad life. And yet, when he died, he went up to Abraham's bosom, it says in chapter 16 of Luke. You see, he went to the good side. And there's a big gulf that separates the wicked from the good. That's the right side of the gulf. So you'll understand the difference is a mile, a million miles apart. You can't cross over. Until when? Until the time of the final great white throne judgment day comes. When God himself opens up the book of life and the book of works. And your works in Christ, through Christ, will either condemn you or save you. That's what it's all about that day. That fateful day. Friends, this is important. For those of you who may be atheistic, or those of you who are Christians, but saying, what in the world? I've been deceived. It doesn't matter. The reason there are so many atheists today is largely because these crazy, befuddled clergymen are teaching lies. They're teaching fables. They don't make sense. The rapture theory, the Jews are Judah, the Jews are Israel, and so on and so forth. They've been deceived, and they're passing it along to a world that says it doesn't make sense, and it doesn't. So let's get into the Word of God, get out of captivity, get out of Babel on. Babel means confusion. We don't want to go there. We want to go into the Word itself. That's important because no matter what you think, this is not a religious program per se. This is a program that brings you all of the truth from the gospel to political to the four hidden dynasties, political, economic, academic, and religious. So you'll know why we're in confusion today in America and the world. We just can't seem to understand what's happened. Well, this book, the Bible, has set it straight for you. Dr. Compare, thank you very much. We're out of time. And until again, the next time, goodbye. And Rick Adams telling you, Yahweh bless his elect.